continuing our series of object lessons, the conventions about God's Word. At church last week, we spoke about how God will always see us through our trials and bring us through on the other side. Just like that pencil acted as a plug, Jesus protects us through our trials and has a bigger plan and purpose. He is big enough to handle all our problems and he will always, always, always see us through. Then, as we listen to the church service, we learned of some trials our church leaders are going through right now and spent time in prayer for them. Prayer is a powerful weapon God has given us. So our object lesson today will be on the topic of prayer, which is talking to God. And we'll go over the Bible story that was shared in the sermon last week. For today's lesson, we'll be using hot water. We'll also need a plate. Ready? Oops, sorry. My favorite. Mine too. So, how do these Skittles relate to prayer? We'll get to that in a minute. But first, what is prayer? Prayer is talking to God. Yes, we can talk to the God of the universe. The God who created you and me. Isn't that amazing? But can we talk to him anytime and anywhere? Anytime and anywhere, Freddy. Psalm 55, 7. Evening and morning and at noon, I will pray and cry aloud. And he shall hear my voice. Wow! And get this. God wants us to come to him. And even delight in hearing and answering our prayers. Amazing! Check out our Bible story as drawn and told by my dad. And we'll be right back with the object lesson. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. After arresting him, he put him in prison handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said and the chains fell off Peter's wrist. Then the angel said to him, put in your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outer entrance and a servant named Rhoda came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that she ran back without opening and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. You're out of your mind, they told her. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said, it must be his angel. But Peter kept on knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were amazed. Peter motioned with his hands for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers and sisters about this, he said, and then he left for another place. Amazing story! After God had miraculously brought Peter out of prison, Peter went to the believer's house where they were all praying for him. But they didn't believe it was him at first. I mean, I don't blame them. How would Peter get out of the prison with all the guards and chains and prison doors? 
but it was by God's hand. He had heard their prayers. It was an impossible situation by human standards, but God had other plans. A miraculous escape from prison. Wow, we can see this kind of thing all throughout the Bible. And God is still at work to this very day. He hears the prayers of his people and nothing is impossible with him. Now what you've been waiting for, Freddy. Are you ready? Sure am. Let's take these Skittles. They'll represent the Lord people all praying together. And this water will present our prayers going up to God. Sometimes or at first, you can't always see what's going on through your prayers. But God always hears our prayers. And when we all come together and pray, something beautiful happens. God hears and acts on the behalf of his people. And the Bible says, the prayers of the righteous are powerful and effective. James 5:16. Wow, what a powerful thing when God's people lift up their prayers to him. 1 John 5, 14 through 15. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. So that's why we're told to Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Colossians 4, 2. And rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Let's end with a prayer now. Will you join me? Dear God, thank you that we can always come to you in prayer and for the power of prayer. Thank you that you love us and always hear us. We lift up the hard trials, many in our congregation, and especially our pastor and his family are going through. Please be with them and show your mighty hand as we trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Way City. Have a great week. And don't forget to devote yourselves to prayer. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.